When we add fractions, we have to have the same bottom numbers for both of our fractions. In this example, we're adding one-fourth plus one-fourth. Both of these fractions already have fours on the bottom, so all we have to do are add the top numbers. One plus one, giving us two, and we'll keep four on the bottom. So one-fourth plus one-fourth equals two-fourths. Remember from our last video, anytime you have a fraction, you have to reduce it before you're done. Two-fourths reduces down to one-half. If you're uncomfortable reducing fractions, check out my other video. As long as you can remember that you're only adding the top numbers, you'll be doing fine. What catches a lot of students off guard is they think that you have to add the top numbers, giving you 2, and also add the bottom numbers, giving you 8. This is not correct. Remember, you're only adding the top numbers. Next, we'll be adding mixed numbers. Again, those are fractions that have a whole number out beside them. Sometimes these will be written out to the side, like 1 and 1 fourth plus 2 and 1 fourth. I recommend you rewrite these with whole numbers over whole numbers and fractions over fractions. It'll just help to keep everything straight. Just like regular addition, start with the numbers on the right, in this case those fractions. We'll add these together, giving us 2 fourths again. And then we'll add the whole numbers, 1 plus 2 just giving us 3. Now we're finished. Well, not quite. We still have to reduce fractions whenever possible. This two-fourths will go down to one-half again. So that our final answer for this one is three and one-half. Now we'll be adding fractions that don't have the same bottom numbers. This time we have two over three plus one over six. In order to get both of these fractions to have the same number on bottom, you just have to think, what will both 3 and 6 fit into? Some students like to go through their multiplication tables and count up by their bottom numbers. So we'll go 3, 6, 9, 12, and then do the same thing for the bottom number of the other fraction. Count up by 6's, going up 6, 12, 18, so on and so forth. Now the new bottom number that you're going to be using is whichever number shows up first for both of these. This is called your lowest common denominator. What helps some other students to find a good bottom number is just to think to yourself what will both of these bottom numbers, 3 and 6, fit into. They'll both fit into the number 6. So you'll rewrite these fractions with 6's on the bottom. I like to rewrite these just to the right of the original fraction. Again, it just helps to keep everything lined up. Now we have problems set up just like they were when we were raising fractions. Check out my other video if you're not comfortable doing that. But if you are comfortable, just remember, all we're doing is taking this bottom number and multiplying it times something to give us this bottom number. We're going from 3 to 6, so we're doing 3 times 2, giving us 6. Do the same thing to the top number in this fraction. 2 times 2 will give us 4. The top fraction, 2 over 3, turns into 4 over 6. Then we take the bottom fraction, 1 over 6. This one pretty much stays the same, because 6 times 1 is 6. So the top number is multiplied times 1 as well. So now we have 4 over 6 plus 1 over 6. We can add these fractions because they have the same bottom number. So we'll add just the top numbers and get 5. Keep that 6 on the bottom. Your answer on this one is 5 over 6. This fraction will not reduce, but you will have to check to see if it will in other questions that you'll be given. Here are another set of fractions that don't have the same bottom number that we'll be adding together. I'll give you a moment to see if you can figure out what the fractions will be turning into before we add them. Here we'll be turning both of the bottom numbers into 6's, because 3 and 6 both fit into 6. This top fraction, the 3 was multiplied times 2, so the 2 is multiplied times 2. So the top fraction is 4 over 6. The bottom one will be the same, because it's 6 times 1 is 6, so the 5 times 1 will leave a 5 on top there. Now we'll add our fractions, 4 and 5 giving us 9, and keep 6 on the bottom. 
Remember from my first fractions video though that this is an improper fraction. We'll have to change it into a mixed number before we'll actually consider that our answer. And remember from that video that all we have to do is take this fraction and divide it out. 9 divided by 6. 6 will go into 9 one time with 3 left over. These are the numbers that help us make our mixed number. It went one whole time with 3 left over and 6 is going to remain our bottom number. So 9 over 6 turns into 1 and 3 6 but remember to reduce if possible. This time it will reduce down to 1 half. So the final answer is 1 and 1 half. Next, we'll be subtracting with fractions. This is another time when it's important to rewrite fraction questions if they're written out sideways, rewrite them up and down with fractions over fractions. Many of the same rules with fraction addition also apply to fraction subtraction. You must have the same bottom numbers before you can actually subtract. In this problem, we already do. Eights are on the bottom of both of our fractions. So we will just be subtracting the top numbers, five minus one, leaving us four. And again, keep that same bottom number, eight. So five eighths minus one eighth leaves four over eight. And just like before, reduce if possible. This fraction reduces down to one half. To save time in this video, I won't be subtracting any fractions that don't already have the same bottom numbers, but to find the same bottom numbers, you'll be doing the same thing as if you were adding and trying to find the same bottom numbers. But if you have any questions in this regard, please leave me a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out. The next skill we will be learning is how to subtract fractions and borrow. Let's say we were given 6 minus 7 tenths. This is another reason why I like to rewrite fraction problems up and down with whole numbers over whole numbers and fractions over fractions to keep everything lined up and see if I can take one number away from another. In this one, I can't take 7 over 10 away from nothing, so I will have to borrow from the 6, making it a 5. Now, if this were a regular subtraction problem without fractions and only using whole numbers, I would just borrow the number 1. But in this case, I'm going to have to borrow 1 as a fraction. And remember from my previous video that if you have one number over top of itself, that's the same thing as one whole unit because 10 over 10 is the same thing as 10 divided by 10. It's going to be one. The reason I use 10 over 10 is because I have 10 on the bottom of this fraction. And remember that if we're going to be subtracting fractions, you have to have the same bottom numbers. So go ahead and save yourself some trouble and borrow the same number on top and bottom as what was already on the bottom here. That's how I got 10 over 10. Now we can take 10 minus 7 and get 3 left over. Keep 10 on the bottom. So 10 over 10 minus 7 over 10 gives me 3 tenths in the fractions column. Go back and finish up by subtracting your whole numbers. In this case it's just 5 minus 0. So you'll keep 5 over here. The final answer will be 5 and 3 over 10. This is what I consider to be the trickiest part about subtracting fractions, when you have to borrow. Remember from regular subtraction that if you cannot take one number away from another, you must borrow from the next place value. If you can't subtract ones, you'll have to borrow from the tens, so on and so forth. Some of those same principles will apply to subtracting fractions if you have to borrow. In this example, we have 6 and 1 over 5, and we're subtracting 2 over 5. Now we know that we can't take 2 away from 1. We're going to have to borrow from this 6. So we borrow from the 6 and turn it into a 5. Now what we're going to borrow is one whole amount, but we're going to have to borrow it as a fraction. Remember that any fraction with the same numbers on top and on bottom equal 1, because that's the same thing as dividing. So 5 over 5 is 5 divided by 5. So we've borrowed 1, but kept it as a fraction. Now you have to just remember, add that 1 that you borrowed, 5 over 5, to whatever fraction was already here, 1 over 5. So this gives us 6 over 5. And we can take 2 away from 6. So here we'll subtract 6 minus 2, we'll leave 4, and keep 5 on the bottom. 
Then go back and subtract your whole numbers, 5 minus nothing in this example, so just 5. So the final answer here is 5 and 4 fifths, because this fraction will not reduce.